Thank you so much for the invitation and thank all of you for showing up. Um, there's always a danger when you have 12 things running back to back that you'll remember none of them. But there is some evidence that people remember the last and sometimes the first. I hope that's the case here. Uh, this is work with my uh, long-standing co-authors, which are listed here. Uh, where's my down? Perfect. OK, what am I going to be talking about today? I'm going to be talking about climate-related risks. And the reason why I'm focusing on climate-related risks, and when you take a look at firms and you ask of the sustainability risks that they view as most important, the number one that's, that, that shows up in most industries and in most countries um, is that of climate-related risks. You don't have to believe me. Uh, you can take a look at the work of the IFRS through the ISSB uh, when they issued in June uh, their first uh, sustainability disclosures, and they focus on climate-related risks. What we bring that I think in our contribution in this paper is to take a look at the question of climate-related risks with a particular focus, and that's to focus on family-controlled companies. The reason why we focus on that, if you're taking a look in a global sample, and in our sample, they constitute 39% of the firms worldwide. They're more important fraction of in, world, uh, in developing countries, and uh, the um, production from developing countries is expected to grow. So the question that we're going to ask in this paper is does family control of firms affect their environmental performance, the material environmental performance. Um, so when we approach this question, you have to start off with a question of uh, what should family control matter? Does it make a difference? And so here we're going to leverage a long literature of which I've contributed to in the past to think about two sources of frictions that might affect family firms and how they behave differently. The first one's the because of control, and they've controlled these companies, there's a possibility of extracting private benefits from that controlling position. Um, and that means that for many investments, uh, a controlled company and a family controlled company would be less willing to invest uh, because they would prefer to direct cash flow to some other other channel where they're able to appropriate 100% of the benefits rather than through another channel. The second perspective, if we think about family controlled firms, is they think in terms of generations. And there's a picture, there's six different generations. Believe it or not, you can take a look at there. Um, so families think in terms of generations. What does that mean? Well, it means that they're particularly nervous about potential existential risks to those firms that they control. You can think about they're interested in maximizing the private benefits for the long term, and they'd like to be there to maximize those benefits in the long term. These are two different frictions. And what we're trying to do in this, in this um, paper is to explore um, environmental performance for a measure that would capture private benefits and a measure that might be able to capture existential risks. Um, we propose as a measure to capture what may, may be sort of standard investment decisions uh, is to take a look at these e-metrics that are available. And we focus on qualitative metrics, these sort of one zero variables, whether you have a policy or a target around some environmental objective. And they ask firms and they score them across these various different things. Um, so that's what we're doing. The second perspective is to take a look at the existential risks, and for that we focus on carbon-related emissions. And we think that that is the, perhaps the most important summary statistic um, for thinking about this. Let me just tell, get ahead to what of our results are. The key new findings that we do, and we take a look at a global sample, more than 4,000 firms for 35 countries. We control for everything underneath the sun that you might think would matter, and we come up to two findings. The first finding is you take a look at family-controlled firms, it's all bite. Around carbon-related emissions, which is a summary statistic of existential risk, they're no worse and sometimes better than widely held firms. And here's a regression that takes a look at this. When we say sometimes better, in countries like Canada that are slow to the game of, of uh, addressing international standards, actually family firms are 20% better in terms of their environmental emissions. The second part is uh, no bark. So bark is, do we care about all that other stuff that you do, those one zero metrics here? And it turns out family firms perform significantly lower against those metrics here, so they're all bite and no bark. Why this is important is it's a new interpretation for a result that we've shown in our prior work that family firms look bad when it comes down to e-scores. And our interpretation we hear is because those e-scores put too high a weight on these qualitative metrics and put too low weight on what actually matters, which is carbon emissions, which I think is a summary statistic. So again, the takeaways are two. First takeaway, family firms are not worse. They are all bite and no bark. 
and this has implications, there my time according to me is up, uh, is that for materiality of e-performance, um, that carbon emissions are indeed material because family firms that have no obligation to pay attention to these things do, and it raises question about these e-scores and are they putting sufficient weight on what really matters, which is emissions, and too much weight on stuff that used to matter but is no longer quite as important like targets and policies. Done.